This is the SEC on ESPN. Inside Humphrey Coliseum today, where BYU visits the 19th ranked Mississippi State Bulldogs. Kevin Fitzgerald, Damian Fish back with you today in Starkville. Ben Howland's team won 25 games a season ago, but missed the NCAA tournament. The committee deemed their non-conference schedule maybe not the toughest. This year, totally different ball game, off to an 11-1 start. Without question, Mississippi State will be an NCAA tournament team. Coach Ben Howland doing the same thing that he did at the likes of North Arizona, Pittsburgh, and UCLA. You look at that win on the road at Dayton, one of the most hostile environments in the country. A win against Clemson as well. This non-conference schedule, well worthy of Mississippi State's valuable non-conference schedule that proves them worthy of the NCAA tournament. They will get there now. It's more about seeding than it is about just making the tournament. And it gets tougher today. In comes a high-scoring BYU club to Starkville. Dave Rose's team off to an eight and six start. We expect a competitive one today. Let's go. Mississippi find, State in the white. You will not find a better coach than Dave Rose. Outstanding individual, and he has his team prepared today. Oh. A foul underneath on the entrance pass to Abdul Adu. And that foul whistled against BYU's star, Yoli Childs, who goes for 22 a night. Well, it's a very simplistic but intelligent chess move by Coach Howland. One of the best ways to control the ability for a star player to score is to put him on the sideline and get him in foul trouble. Critical foul early for Childs. He's perhaps a future pro, and that is one player BYU does not want to get into foul trouble today. Oh, he, he's a pro, and then the, the question will be what what level he plays at, but his skill set, his footwork is sensational. He'll definitely play for money. So not only Childs, but T.J. Hawes in that starting lineup as well. He can score 17 or 18 a night. BYU plays at a high pace and can score with the best of them. Josh Shear, Hardnett with the first bucket for the Cougars. Yeah, out of Chipola College, Hardnett, nice body control, loves to get to the free throw line, does an outstanding job of that. Eric Holman with a slip to the basket. Eric Holman out of Orangeboro, Kentucky, has continued to elevate his game, and particularly from behind the three-point line, every single year for Mississippi State. He's the senior in all SEC selection. And this is a Mississippi State team with plenty of those experienced players in the roster. So there is Dave Rose. This is now his 14th season as the head coach at BYU. And all those wins, seventh most among active head coaches. Well, you talk about his winning percentage as well as his current most consecutive Division I 20 win seasons. He's up amongst the likes of Coach K at Duke, Bill Self, Mark Few, and Roy Williams, just to name a few. Again, he has done an outstanding job, and I think BU or BYU fans appreciate that by his contract extension through 2022. That's some nice company to be a part of. This is Nick Weatherspoon for three. And the rebound down to Connor Harding. It's a nice pace and tempo for BYU right now. Nice. T.J. Hawes. In their game versus UNLV, they played man and zone. But even though BYU scores in the 85s and, and you know, the high to mid-80s, uh, I think if they can slow Mississippi State down and then run offensively, they give themselves a good chance. There's a turnover, and BYU is going to get the ball back. Well, you always look at the ability to go to the rim and when you look at Hawes, he doesn't have the best body or you don't see a tremendous athletic figure, but he is a heady basketball player and his ability to knock down the three-point shot allows him to get to the rim. He's one of the captains on the roster. A team that Dave Rose described to us as a bit more experienced, pretty vocal. We have a lot of captains on the floor, not just Hawes. Nice pass. Zach Selyus, an open look. Here comes Mississippi State. Holman from deep, way behind the line. The 
first triple. He may have taken that shot from Orangeboro, Kentucky. Nice range being displayed there. He can step out and hit the three at a high rate for someone that is six foot ten with a great wingspan. Child says, I see it, I can do the same. Yeah, I love that answer. Listen, Childs has good size. His footwork is what separates him, but his touch is what will determine his ability to go to the next level. You brought up pace a few moments ago. It will be intriguing to see how this shapes out. It could be a high-scoring matchup. Childs catches in the paint. Nice teardrop. If you notice, Childs, all bigs do this. They initiate the contact first. You look throughout the SEC, Grant Williams does this at Tennessee. Uh, once they initiate the, con the contact and create that space, that allows them the mobility and movement to score at the rim. Another three on this side. There's Quinteri Weatherspoon, the senior from Canton. Harding, the freshman. Another response, and the shots are falling early inside Humphrey Coliseum. <laughs> Well, two teams that we know can score, speaking with Coach Rose before the game, he said, our offense has been there for BYU. It's defensively where we feel like we need to pick it up. All right there, good sleight of hand. Selyus starts a break. Hardnet had the shot blocked by Holman. Then a travel, and Mississippi State basketball. Impressive pace, both teams wanting to get up and down. Eric Holman salvaging that possession. His 175th block shot, he's fifth amongst career leaders for Mississippi State. But right now, I think Mississippi State needs to go back where they went early. They need to go back inside, see if they can get a second foul on Childs. And it's Holman going to work on Childs. He tried to slam it down. And he gets his second opportunity. Yeah, he just can't afford to foul. And so when you play BYU, and Coach Rose is going to have to deal with that, every team that has any type of big man presence is going to go inside because of Child's ability to manufacture points on this end. Almost hit the fadeaway, too. 26 points to start. Oh! And two more. Take that. Nick Weatherspoon. Hawes can't hit what would have been the third triple for BYU to start. And Weatherspoon had eyes again for perhaps the transition. Alley-oop, he's in the corner this time. Hawes fouled. They don't like it, Kevin, but it's beautiful. We talked about Hawes and his ability to play with the basketball IQ, but on this other end, Nick Weatherspoon going up to the top floor of the elevator. Go get some of that, Weatherspoon. I love it. Two, 28 points combined in the first few minutes with former Auburn star Damian Fishback, Kevin Fitzgerald with you. We asked what type of pace we would get. I think our question has been answered a few minutes in. <laughs> Well, we know that both of these teams can score offensively, so not a surprise that we see a team in Mississippi State that had a record-setting 19 three-pointers versus Clemson and a team in BYU who's been known for scoring all year come out and set this type of pace. Uh, it's not a Jimmy Fredette pace, but, but it's a fast pace. It's two teams that get up and down, and that man right there that's going to a line has been a critical piece, Kevin, simply because he's not only one of the captains of this team, but I think he sets the tone on the offensive end when he plays well, so does BYU. He's the captain in the starting lineup, the junior from Alpine, Utah. He's hit from the outside. We've seen him attack the rim as well. And now he's at the line for three free throws. So there is little TJ Hawes. His brother was next to him a moment ago, Tyler. Tyler is the program's all-time leading scorer. And <laughs> look out, Dad, Marty, because TJ is He's coming for you as well. <laughs> well, Dad, I'm sure is excited to see both of uh, his sons do extremely well. And when people talk about BYU, obviously uh, they, they think about Jimmy Fredette, but the reality is, is 
when you look at Halls and the, and the points that he manufactured, it's, it's very impressive because you don't think that when you think of BYU simply because of the recency of Jimmy and what he's done. Three 1,000-point scorers in the same family. And one went for almost 3,000 in his career. Here's the freshman, Reggie Perry. Yeah, it's like trying to chop down a tree. Coach Ben Howland is just going to continue to attack Childs on the interior until BYU proves they can stop it. Travel. Ryland Bergerson tried to attack the rim. And so Mississippi State basketball. Childs has picked up one foul. That's your early strategy. Keep feeding the post for Mississippi State. It'll be the strategy of any team that has a big that feels like they can attack Childs. Now, with that being said, I love the strategy by Coach Rose staying in this zone. Changing to a zone in the UNLV game is what really helped them make a run. They played that zone for about 30 minutes of that basketball game. Perry bulldozes in, but it's an offensive foul. I think that's the correct call. Anthony Jordan right there. And on that particular play, Perry really didn't have to do that. I love his physical size, his presence on the interior. I think he's actually the difference maker for Mississippi State. He's the difference whether they get uh, to the Sweet 16 or whether they're able to advance further with a chance to go to Minneapolis. On this roster with so many experienced players, Perry, the McDonald's All-American, the freshman. And gave it away to the other team. So here's Hawes. BYU likes to run. Plays in many high possession games. Lamar Peters, the young man with the basketball in his hand, has elevated his game so much. Obviously the way he shoots the basketball, but I think his decision making has went to another level this season. He's fouled on the drive. Dave Rose's team off to the 8-6 start. Yes, they're 0-4 on the road, but this is the seventh game that BYU has played away from home. And so Rose has challenged his club. Hey, here's a tough schedule. Let's go win some games this year. Well, you look at some of those losses, Kevin, right? You think about Nevada, obviously a team that can make a run in the tournament. You think about Houston uh, at Illinois State, uh, at Weber State. And, and UNLV, which technically was not a road game, but in Las Vegas. So they played a, a tough schedule, which I think will pay them dividends as the season goes along. He's trying to pick one up in Starkville today to get to nine and six. So you highlighted Peters. He has been spectacular from beyond the arc this year. In addition to feeding his teammates, he might be the beneficiary, but instead Tyson Carter is at the line for one more. Now that's what you can't do. You, you can't afford to turn over the basketball. And this is any good team, right? Uh, especially when you look at tournament play, you see so many plays like this because the better the talent level, the better the athleticism, uh, the more that you have to secure the basketball. Virginia does a good job of this. And Tyson Carter has taken as big a strides as anyone in the Southeastern Conference this year, a coach's son, a heady basketball player, and he is playing with a tremendous amount of confidence this season. The local kid from Starkville High School. Yeah, and, and I think he completes this backcourt. We talk about the Weatherspoon brothers, we talk about Lamar Peters, but Tyson Carter is a tremendous and intricate part of this backcourt. Carter guards hard net, but it's back to Childs. Slips the pass through two white jerseys, but it goes off of Luke Worthington's fingers and out of bounds. Well, this experienced backcourt for Ben Howland has, has helped this team get out to an 11-1 start. Uh, you mentioned experience. Top six scorers are back from a year ago, many of the guards. Yeah, well, and, and you think about the guys who could have went to the next level. They actually tried it out. You see Anthony Jordan calling the goaltending call on that particular play, but guys like Eric Holman, Lamar Peters, uh, Quindary Weatherspoon, these are guys that could have taken that chance, but as so many young players are across the country, as you're thinking about going to the, to the NBA, look at the, the reward that they're receiving by coming back. Not only experiencing college basketball, but their games have improved. 
scouts want to see you get better, and I think each of these players that have come back from Mississippi State have gotten better. BYU ball after the turnover. Hardnett, the Mississippi native. Worthington fights for the rebound. Big shot. Hawes can't stick it. Worthington, a second offensive board, but it's free. Carter had it. Perry, the tip. Third try, it goes. Mississippi State up two. So right now, you see BYU is doing just fine when they can keep it in the half court or get it out on the break. I don't like this tempo for BYU. I think it's going a little bit too fast where Mississippi State's using their athleticism. Holman for three. And now the Cougars can run. It, you expect them to play that at that pace? They do tend to be in some high possession games. Well, you just have to be under control. And on that particular possession, Coach Rose actually put his hand out to tell his guys to slow it down and not to move so expeditiously. We'll see right now BYU hanging on by a thread. They guard Ben Howland, favorite vacation spot. Santa Barbara, California, or Maui. Pre-game meal. I like to have chicken. Post-game meal. Maybe some pizza. Your mentor. I have many mentors, but my boss for 13 years was Jerry Pym. Yeah, the old head coach at UC Santa Barbara, Ben Howland, spent a number of the year, years there on his staff. This season, Mississippi State had some high expectations. They scheduled tougher. They're 11-1. And, and, and Fish, you can see, three years. And, and now the fourth for Ben Howland. They've grown. They've won some tougher games. And can they improve that win total again? We'll wait and see. I think he's already proven it in the non-conference schedule now. For Coach Ben Howland, they want to try to complete it with the win here at home against BYU. But again, we, we, we mentioned this at the outset. This is customary of what he has done everywhere that he's been. Uh, Northern Arizona, they made the tournament in his fourth year at Pittsburgh, Sweet 16, UCLA, back-to-back -back Final Fours. Uh, and Mississippi State, I expect that as well. Uh, but BYU is not going to go away. I like the zone defense that they're playing, trying to change up the tempo of this basketball game. 40 points out of the gates for these two teams. Pause skies for another rebound. Defense, that's been the question for BYU this year. And they can score quite a bit, but they've lost some high scoring affairs. They've given up 90 in their last two games. Pause the captain into the paint. Finally finds the right angle and off the window. I love guys that play at their own speed. They don't allow anyone to speed them on. At Virginia, you look at Ty Jerome and Kyle Guy, good guards that do that as well. And, and, and right now, Halls is not allowing the pressure defense of the Bulldogs to speed him up. So we've got the college football playoff today, of course, but there's another rivalry game for you, number 16, Kentucky in Louisville. You can watch it on the ESPN app as well. That's at 2 p.m. today on ESPN2. Kentucky has won five out of the last six in that series. New head coach in the mix this year. Well, and, and obviously Coach Mack knows about rivalries from the Xavier Cincinnati rivalry. They're led by Jordan Wara, who I think is a different player this year. He is silky smooth. Went from a role player to put on a show player, if you will. But Kentucky's playing good basketball. I think they're in the right place. They're playing with a chip on their shoulder. Outstanding win against North Carolina. Can't wait to see that matchup. What stood out to you from Kentucky's standpoint in that win against North Carolina? That was last week. The same thing that all the Coach Cal's teams do. They get better over time. And because of the way in which they lost versus Duke, I think people kind of broke Kentucky off, but the staff is still intact. And so as you look at the other teams throughout the, the SEC, Tennessee, Auburn, Mississippi State, I think all four of those teams candidly have the capability and potentially could end up in Minneapolis. I feel that strongly about the collection of talent and the stabs behind those teams. Tennessee sitting third in the country. Remember Ben Howland, he said a couple months ago, I think Tennessee's the best team in the league. 
Sure. Well, uh, Tennessee has proven themselves the best team in the league up to this point. I think as they go through conference, all of the teams in the Southeastern Conference will find out their strengths and weaknesses. A rare late nice in the shot pass. clock opportunity for BYU. Worthington, he sticks it off the window. Nice find from Hardnett. Well, the, the respect that Coach Rose has for Worthington is invaluable. He talked about one of the best leaders that he's ever had that will be on his coaching staff next year. How about the block at the rim? And the eventual putback for Mississippi State. Heck of a play by Nick Weatherspoon. He's watching brother Quindary <laughs> score uh, from the scorer's table on the other end. Well, Come and had us there. <laughs> the crowd loves it and responds to the effort and the finish. I was going to say something about Humphrey Coliseum's fans, but I love this action and so do the players. SEC Women's Basketball Tournament is tipping off in Greenville, South Carolina, March 6th through the 10th. Be a part of the experience. This is your opportunity to witness the best student athletes in the country compete for the 2019 SEC Tournament Championship title. We will see you in that Greenville. For more information and to purchase tickets, visit secsports.com. SEC Women's Basketball. It just means more. Four-point lead for Mississippi State at home. How about the steal on one end of the floor? Quindary Weatherspoon, the finish. Well, I'll be frank, Kevin. I didn't get a chance to see it because Nick Weatherspoon was almost in our lap spilling the coffee on, on, on you over here. But it was, it, it was an outstanding play. And it's, it's funny, that brother-to-brother -brother communication is, is fantastic for the Weatherspoon brother. He's a cream and sugar guy. I would have gotten him one. <laughs> well, here comes Nick again. Ben Howland says he plays at an all-out pace all the time. Oh, Carter for three. Offensively, Mississippi State can't compete with anybody in the country. In the game against Arizona State, they gave Arizona State a 17-18 point lead. And we know Arizona State is an outstanding team out of the Pac-12. Uh, but if you're BYU, you can't afford to get down too big against the Bulldogs here on the road. Another and one opportunity for the junior from right here in Starkville, Tyson Carter. They come at you in waves, right? Six man right now for Mississippi State, but he could start on multiple teams across the country. So many players on this Mississippi State team that uh, have family that actually played there, similar to BYU, right? You think about these two organizations, uh, these two teams, and how they have allowed players to come back and build the tradition from fathers and brothers that have played at both universities. I think that is so fantastic, and it builds tradition for your team. Greg Carter, he's always in the crowd, his father. Part of that backcourt. There's a synergy among these guards at Mississippi State. Why the growth this year? Uh, another year playing together, right? Knowing what to expect from one another. And right now, you see that synergy. And B.Y., you're the Cougars right now. You've got to try to turn things around rather quickly. I'm going chalk, okay? I'm going chalk. You just can't doubt those two coaches when you give them time to prepare. But I do think the, the game will be a little bit closer than people expect. This one is starting to fade away for BYU. They've got to get back in this one quick. Nick Weatherspoon is at the line one more time for a three-point play. Sure. Well, two things. Number one, you look at the points off of turnovers. Uh, Mississippi State now has seven. Uh, if, if you look at these two teams, obviously the advantage, athletic-wise, goes to Mississippi State, right? They look bigger, a little bit stronger, faster. Uh, but for BYU, I think the skill set goes to the Cougars. And so if you can make this a little bit more of a half-court game, Make Mississippi State face five guys defensively every single trip. And then in the half court, take your time, execute, and send the basketball back to Childs. Then you can claw your way back into this game. Number 23 in the blue, center of the paint. He scores 22 a game. He's been, at this point, 
neutralized a bit the last few minutes. Well, he's allowed Mississippi State to dissuade him from going to the interior. He needs to go back inside and know that he's in for a dogfight. He's got it. And that ends the 13-0 Mississippi State run. Yeah, when you're struggling, always go where your bread is buttered. And that score also allows them to set their defense. This is going to stay here. Kevin, so many people talk about the defense of Coach Tony Bennett. Uh, this year, right, Michigan and, and Coach Beeline are phenomenal defensively. But the, the two affect one another. Offense affects your defense and vice versa. And so the more stops BYU can get, the better their offense will be. And the more they can score, the better they'll be able to defend the Bulldogs. So BYU is going to get it back here. Connor Harding, he was blocking out Quindary Weatherspoon, and he's whistled for the over-the-back foul. A lot of pressure on some of these BYU players, and perhaps unwarranted, too. Look, they've been on the road quite a bit this year. Every season, Dave Rose has been the head coach at BYU. They have won 20 games or more, and the fan base knows that. Well, they, they, they can overcome some of that pressure by sending the basketball in to Childs. Uh, and, and you said that, right? The tradition, the brand has been built by BYU, as has it's been built by, uh, by Gonzaga. Uh, how, you, how you continue to overcome that is to go with the process versus trying to concentrate on so much of that pressure that you have as a player. Childs and Weatherspoon, the last two baskets for either team. The leading scores, and Hawes, yep, he's whistled for the offensive foul there, threw his left arm out. Yeah, solid. Nick Weatherspoon is one of the better defenders in the SEC. He has the athleticism, uh, he has the motor, and, and most important, he has the heart to play it for 40 minutes while he's in between the lines. So uh, if you're Hawes, you have to be cautious and make sure that you pick and choose when to attack the basket. Last touched by BYU, Ryland Bergerson got his hand on it. If you're Coach Rose right now, obviously conference coach of the year three times, four conference titles. Uh, right now, he, he cares about the win. But what he cares about more than the win is making sure that his guys play Cougar basketball. And right now, they're starting to play Cougar basketball again. Boy, they had the stop, and it went off of Celius's hands and out of bounds. Well, there's a technical foul whistled against BYU. Wow. Looks like it was issued our Landis Poole, veteran official. We have a tremendous crew on hand. And he's talking to Coach Rose. That's and always a good thing when you're at least having the conversation. I'm sure he wishes they could have had the conversation before the technical Stop the conversation. Though. It was on BYU's bench, one of the assistant coaches. So you have to stop. Then you lose the ball out of bounds, plus these two technical free throws and it's Bulldogs' possession. Yeah, that's tough. Yeah, when you were beginning to grab your momentum, now how you can try to respond to that is to try to get a stop here. Plenty of time left in this basketball game. Weatherspoon with that veteran move to catch the pass and an de indefensible shot, 15-point lead. He has Denzel Washington-type smoothness when he is in between <laughs> the line. He never gets rattled. They're saying the same about you, too. <laughs> I don't know about that. Is Harding, quite a confident freshman. Childs left open for a minute. And a oh, nice spin. That is beautiful. It looks much easier than it was. It was the catch in traffic, and then he puts it down in traffic and finishes with the left. Coach Ben Hallen is right. I think he is the best big that Mississippi State has faced all year. He averages a double-double. Weatherspoon twisting in for two more. High-level basketball. The, the challenge is when Mississippi State guards, uh, I think they can compete with anyone in the country because I don't know if anyone can stop them offensively. Hard net, chucked that one off the window, and he has a couple free throws. 
Ben Howland has even asked of his team, we need better defensive performances with conference play around the corner. And I agree. I think this is a team that uh, could, could possibly have a zero in the loss column if they would defend night in and night out. Harden a proven winner, average 22, as he won a Mississippi Class 6A title. He's the Gulfport native down in Mississippi near Biloxi. He has an army of friends and family here today. Well, whenever you go back and play from where you're from, there's a little additive pressure, and I'm sure he wants to play well. But right now, with this season and his as well improved as I think the WCC is this year. BYU is just trying to get better because they'll be challenged in conference play this year. Hardnett has played some solid defense today. Now BYU was out of bounds. McKay Cannon stepped out of the end line before creating that run out. Kevin, you mentioned this yesterday. It's always intriguing when you look at the stories for the Cougars. You know, so different than the normal, a lot of normal colleges. These guys being married and, <laughs> you know, uh, going on mission trips. And it's just so unique when you look at the freshmen that are, aren't characteristic as a lot of freshmen that you see at other universities. And those freshmen typically two years older than the <laughs> average freshman. Up top to Nick one more time. And the younger Weatherspoon brother can't throw this one down. Harding, one of those 20-year-old freshmen, had his shot blocked out of bounds at Mississippi State defensively stifling right now. Well, they have multiple shot blockers. That's a tough call right there. Coach Rose had his, had his arms open. I believe the dude got him with the body a little bit. A little contact and a turnover. Not many breaks for BYU in the first half. Carter, short. Holman might have been whistled for the loose ball foul. And it is. That is his second personal foul. So BYU basketball with 4-10 left in the first. Well, you talk about BYU and saying they, they probably haven't been getting a lot of breaks, but in order to continue to get breaks, you've got to attack the rim. And so right now, if you're Coach Rose, I'm telling my guys, let's put the onus on the officials. We know that Mississippi State's long, they're athletic, have a lot of shot blockers. But let's initiate that contact because I think the charity stripe is the way they have to get back into this basketball game. Dave Rose's team at the line the rest of the half. On every foul, Cougars in the bonus, and Zach Selyus, the junior, converts a pair. This is where Lamar Peters has changed his game. In the past, he would have been concerned about him scoring the points. Right now, he's more of a traditional point guard just running the basketball team. His assist numbers are higher. You have the big man down low to feed it to from time to time. Abdul and do. Hardnett had a little separation, passes the shot up. Here's Harding. And now they settle for the three. Here comes Mississippi State. Tough break. Good look. You just have to knock that shot down. A laser to a do. Fading away, left it short. Well, that's where Mississippi State can continue to improve. Their bigs have the ability to step out, but they need to give them more of an inside presence. Near the corner for Celius, down and out. BYU now two of eight from beyond the arc. Those shots will start to fall. They just have to continue to get stops on this end. Mississippi State has led for the majority of this one. Up 14. Every Coliseum where Nick and Quinde Weatherspoon are literally tearing it up. Nick Weatherspoon tearing up the rim on that play out on the fast break. One of the best mid-range jump shooters in the SEC. And Big Brother has to continue to show Little Brother how to do it. Quinde Weatherspoon 
from behind the three-point line, and he is, yes, sir, a smooth operator. Never gets rattled, and you see his big body and size can go up over taller and stronger defenders, the leader on this basketball team. And when you take a look at their numbers in this first half, you see why Coach Ben Howland went so hard to get both of these players in. 20 combined points today. They're 8 of 12 from the field. They just look a little quicker, to be honest, on offense, attacking the rim, and then finding their jump shots as well. Well, when you have, you know, you have a brother, that cohesion, that chemistry, unspoken words that you don't have to say a lot. They just know where each other's going to be on the floor. That's an asset without question for the Bulldogs. And you throw in this, Lamar Peters, who finds it due. He left it short. Childs running the floor. He got the hand oh, in the face of the nice. defensive side. And as the transition hoop, BYU needs to string a couple together. Come on now, he's playing for money, Kevin. Are you kidding me? That's mobility, that's poise, that's control. He's getting it in the break. I love his back to the basket game. He will play somewhere for sure. He has a quiet 15 points with a half that featured so much offense. Child's already at 15. But another turnover, and BYU doesn't do this too often in games. And they almost have double digit turnovers in the first half. Well, and that's what I mean when I talk about Virginia and Michigan because the more and better you are on the defensive end, and that's one thing Kentucky's continued to improve upon, the better offensive opportunities that you get. And so if you're BYU, if you can just take care of the basketball, you can cut this lead in a hurry. Childs pushed out. Good double team. Weatherspoon knocks it away. Perry saves it. So the double team forces another Cougars turnover. If you're a young big, no matter what level you're playing on, when you prove that you can score one-on-one, -on -one, the next step is always working on your ability to throw out of the double team. The better passer you are, the more that you will dissuade teams from sending two guys at you. Keyshawn Fizel into the game with a minute and 35 left in the first. Keyshawn Fizel for the Bulldogs, another big body that I think they actually need to help extend their depth on this basketball team to make a run both in the SEC and postseason play. He would be that ninth man in the rotation. The 11th BYU turnover. They are at their season average. Wow. Well, give credit. Uh, you know, Mississippi State's got long arms. We talked about their athleticism. When they sit down and get in the stance, well, they do a nice job, but you see it's 11 turnovers on both sides. Carter's three long. Cannon nice to Childs with the left hand. Ooh, ooh, ooh. I like that over the head, no look. Timeout, Mississippi State. Well, you see Cannon drawing two defenders on that play, and that's why I say that I like Child's game so much because he can score in multiple ways. Look at the defenders for Mississippi State. They had no idea which direction Cannon was going, watching his eyes and his body versus watching the basketball. And look, he scored the last 10 for BYU. Look, well, he's their go-to guy. I mean, if you think about some of the great scores in the history of BYU, we all know Jimmer Fredette and the points that he scored second at BYU. And Childs is, is continuing to track along. I don't know if he'll be back next year the way he is playing this season, but both tremendous players and got it done in their own way, Kevin. Childs on the inside. Fredette, of course, could shoot it from half court <laughs> for BYU and still does playing professionally. Perry, good head fake Woo! and the stuff. Good gracious. I like him. I like him a lot and I think his ceiling is extremely high. He can put it on the floor. He's got a nice touch. 
but his God-given ability and body that he has is what's most impressive for me. And McDonald's All-American from Georgia. He's guarding Childs. Again, has to catch quite a ways outside the paint. And a nice find inside. Selyus has a bucket. Ten-point game. Big difference. Childs that time saw the double team coming and got it out of the hands rather quickly. Nick Weatherspoon has got to go. Two to shoot. Rises. Ten-point lead for Mississippi State <laughs> at the break. After that shot, Ben Howley kind of had his hands up. Nick Weatherspoon didn't even bear to look at his head coach. He knew what time it was. <laughs> Brother Quindary with 15 first half points. Mississippi State leads by 10. The college basketball halftime report starts right after this. on ESPN in Starkville, Mississippi today. And the Bulldogs looking to stretch their win streak to nine games in a row. 10 point advantage over BYU, who visits an SEC school for the first time in 20 years. The only child, he now has 19. And the Cougars need a run out of the break. As expected, Coach Rose right out of the break with an impeccable set to get Childs at the rim. Outstanding job by the Cougars to start off the second half. He seems to always be catching deep in the paint. Ball knocked free. Cougars have it. Well, when you get a guy like Childs in the screen, he does a nice job of slipping the screen. Slipping the screen means they go up to act like they're going to set it, and then they slip away before the defender can get to him. A nice job that time, and a nice call by Coach Rose. Harding, he was out of bounds. So now Mississippi State basketball. Who does Childs remind you of the way he can stretch the floor a bit this year? You know, that's intriguing. I don't know if there is a player exactly that, that he reminds me of, uh, but his, his skill set I know is fit to play at the next level because even though he's not extremely quick, uh, he's quick enough. He does have to continue to improve his jump shot, as Coach Rose said, though, to get by defenders. Holman slips by Childs on the baseline for two. The Owensboro, Kentucky native in his final year, the senior. And he's trying to push this team towards a deep tournament run. Yeah, Eric Holman is another guy that's on draft boards as well because of his ability to knock down the jump shot. He finds Weatherspoon. Pause. He catches the fling. The Euro step around Peters couldn't finish. Worthington fouled underneath. Nice job by Worthington on the glass. And we talked about the slip by Childs. Eric Holman nice, does a nice job of slipping in behind the defense where they cannot see him. The nice finish at the rim. He's dealt with injuries off and on throughout his career. This is the healthiest that I have seen him. He's that modern big man. He can shoot the three. He can block shots. I think some teams at the next level may like him. He's still young. He's 21 years old for a senior. Yeah, well, he's 21 years young. And uh, he talked to us about what he did over the Christmas break. He had a chance to go home. And he said, you know, when he goes home, people just show up at his house <laughs> uninvited. But he said he actually likes it when people come over. You know, uh, but from time to time when he goes back, he just wants to spend a little time with his family and get away. I told him as he gets to the next level, that's going to happen much more. <laughs> yeah, we'll see who shows up next year. Mississippi State's lead back to 10. It led by as many as 15 in the first half, but that was because T.J. Hawes did not play much of that half. In foul trouble, his drive opens up another basket. He's an offense starter and a captain for this basketball team. You have to respect his jump shot. He can get to the rim because of that, and a nice job of being an attacker on that play. He can score 18 a game. Holman with the dunk. Love that emotion. I want you to spread the word, the word through Starkville, Mississippi, that you got a top basketball team here. They're ranked 19. I think they're a team that's going to end up being ranked much higher than that. Here you see the nice shot fake by Nick Weatherspoon, or nice pass fake 
And then here you see Lamar Peters moving up those assist leading charts about 14 away from being in the top 10 all time for Mississippi State, Lamar Peters. Peters no longer just a scorer. He's a playmaker, a true point guard this year. But he is a scoring point guard, which has been interesting to see in the games they struggle. He's now realizing when he needs to take over the basketball game. Holman behind the back, the fancy pass to Weatherspoon. Holman, he passed up that three, hoping his team gets a better look. Eight to shoot. Ooh. This is Nick Weatherspoon. No. Nice pass. Nick Weatherspoon just didn't know where he was. Oh, it's a little change of speed, and he converts at the rim. Picasso like beauty. And you don't say that because he moves so quick or because he jumped and dunked it, but how smooth and how he changed the pace on that particular play was so impressive to me. Quinn Terry Weatherspoon left open, and he sticks the three. That's tough. It is tough to guard really four Phenomenal threat to Mississippi State. There's a quick three from Childs. Worthington, they thought there was contact down below, out of bounds, Bulldogs ball. Well, on this ball reversal, most bigs you may not have to guard, but you have to get out there and defend Eric Holman. So Hardy just didn't have a chance to get back to, to Quindary Weatherspoon. You can't guard all of those guys. And that's why I think Mississippi State is a team that's going to have to be dealt with, not only in the, the SEC, but in postseason play as well. Ranked in the preseason poll, they're 11-1. They've lived up to the hype. Still ranked and that one loss to Arizona State, the now-ranked Sun Devils. A whistle away from the ball. Nick Emery on the ground. Looked like he took a body blow underneath. You know, as, as much as BYU has dealt with, Kevin, from foul trouble from a couple of guards in their first half to, you know, the turnovers, which candidly, Miss, Mississippi State had turnovers as well. Uh, BYU just wasn't able to take advantage. They are still very much in this basketball game. A couple of stops. You can get this basketball game to a couple of possessions. Go back to Childs, the double team. Emery, sharp shooter, short. Carter has it. Got to have more from Emery on that play. He's a better player than that. Perry, the shimmy. BYU gets the stop it wanted. Didn't make the shot, but I like that. Good defense on Childs. If I'm BYU, I want to go back inside. Pause. This is Weatherspoon on the drive. Into the corner for Tyson Carter. To get the record books and the statistics, Lamar Peters gets those three points. The old Lamar Peters was hunting for his shot. Without hesitation, he moved the basketball, changed sides of the floor too quickly for the Cougars to recover. Pause on the drive again. Dave Rose thought there was contact on the prior drive into the paint. Mississippi State converted the basket on the other end. Now the turnover. Pause. Stops. A little long. Now. That was good hustle by Worthington to get back. Paul's just coming up a little hard on that shot. Again, though, this pace, Kevin, starting to speed up a little too much for the Cougars. Sixty to forty-six. One of the reasons why Lamar Peters. Look at him directing traffic like a police officer up there, telling Tyson Carter to get through. But guess what? When he gets it back, he doesn't take the shot. Look at the quick ball reversal, rewarding Tyson Carter for the movement. Lamar Peters, without question, the straw that stirs the drink for the Bulldogs. We talk about the Weatherspoon brothers. 
We talk about Carter off the bench, the bigs, Perry, Holman, Adu. But Lamar Peters is the difference between where this team was last year and where they have excelled to this year. Such a better leader on the floor from sophomore to junior year. He's, he's taken that jump in maturity as a player grows in his career. When does it click? When does it usually click for that guard specifically to turn into the leader and the facilitator on the floor? I think Coach Beheim of Syracuse said it best. He said different players make those changes at different times, right? You have some freshmen that come in, they're one and done. Other players, it may be their sophomore, it may be their junior year in which it starts to click and they start to understand. Lamar Peters was in and out uh, from this basketball team last year. And so there was a push and pull. Give credit to the staff of Coach Howard for doing a nice job of continuing to mold him, not giving up on him. And now they're receiving the benefits of that this season. Peters has accepted that coaching. And he's making some, we've used the term next level a few times today. He's making some next level passes. Well, you think about guards in both leagues, right? Perkins for Gonzaga. Nice block. Right there, the Childs. block from Childs. Perry got it back. Count the basket. I love, I love Perry. I really do. I think he's going to be a difference maker. But, but as you were talking about, Kevin, the guards in both leagues, right? Perkins does an outstanding job for Gonzaga in the SEC. You talk about uh, Jared Harper, another point guard for, for Auburn. Uh, Lewis at Alabama. Uh, Tremont Waters, TJ Starks, so many guards in both leagues. But I would put Lamar Peters up there with any of the guards in any league because of his ability to separate and his ability to score as well. Childs with 19 today. Double team. They've been doing that all day. Worthington hit. And BYU gets the whistle. He's got a couple free throws coming. So Sports Center tonight after the Orange Bowl on ESPN with Scott Van Pelt. They'll have the post-game reactions and analysis from Miami. And also have thoughts on the title game matchup that we will find out later this evening. Steph tries to stop the losing streak out in Oakland. I am still on the Golden State bandwagon for now. But it's certainly questioned uh, simply because you think about the lack of depth that they have this year. They need Cousins to come back. But the wear and tear when you go to the NBA Finals year after year, it's already 82 game season, but going through those playoffs looks like it's starting to wear on their players without that depth a little this year. Could this be the fifth straight year? Got ways to go. Is. How about that <laughs> chase down block Weatherspoon? And then the hit for three. Hawes knocks it down. A player down on the other end of the floor for Mississippi State. And it's Nick Weatherspoon. Clearly experiencing some discomfort grabbing the left ankle. You talk about all the pieces for this basketball team. You hope that Nick Weatherspoon is going to be okay. See if he could put pressure on it. Look at this block. Huge block. Nice recovery. And they'll take Nick Weatherspoon to the back and see if he's going to be okay. But he's a huge piece of this Mississippi State team because of the way he approaches the game. Uh, we talked about Mississippi State being down in a few games this year. They jumped out to a big lead on Clemson and then allowed Clemson to get back into it. Nick Weatherspoon is the guy that says, we're going to play this way at this speed every single time. I'm between the lines. He's a true leader, and he leads by example. He will be missed for this next 13 minutes. Well, and it helps that you can bring Tyson Carter off the bench. He has the ball. He can get you 10 per game. No call. Ooh, Holman ooh. scoops it in. I like that big fella. Shot fake Earl the Pearl spin with the finger roll. The Earl the Pearl comparison, I like it. Pause from way outside. That would have been his second straight three. Carter 
He out jumps Child for the board. <laughs> Been like this for much of the game. Mississippi State up by 10, 14, 12 right. in that range. They just haven't been able to pull away. And kudos to the Cougars for hanging on right now. We talked about Eric Holman, Kevin. I know the scouts like this. You got to respect the shot fake, gets Childs up in the air, and then able to avoid the charge and then the touch with the Iceman finger roll off of the glass. Long wingspan. This ball stays here. All showing Tyson Carter some of his wingspan. I like that. <laughs> Since you got to come better than that, Tyson. How impactful is Hawes going to be the rest of the way? Sat a lot in that first half due to foul trouble. Well, he should be fresh. Uh, he, he certainly is the key that starts the engine. Childs gets a lot of the credit, but Hawes is a big piece as well. Holman can hit from the outside as well. They're going to score, so know that. You're going to have to put up points when you play the Bulldogs. Too many weapons. Oz keeps the pivot foot. Threw it away momentarily. The effort from Lamar Peters. Yeah, I love it. Worthington and Emery were there to save it. Emery goes in, offensive foul. It was Perry again who stepped in to take the charge. People are questioning the comment of Mississippi State being a team that could possibly make that run. I guarantee you Coach Rose and BYU would say, with Perry giving it up like that, no telling how far the Bulldogs can go. Good Mississippi State's sophomore guard getting looked at earlier this half. He came down awkwardly on his ankle, so the athletic trainer's taking a look at that left ankle on the sideline. Well, he's trying to sit up, trying to work back into the game today. Sure. Well, and, and he and his brother play off of one another. We talked to them a little bit yesterday at their walkthrough, and they are so close and think so much of each other. Uh, I'm interested to see how they continue to go without him. Not missing a beat right now. In Weatherspoon's absence, Nick uh, pardon Eric Holman has hit another. And he has 21 today. That's 10 points higher than his season average. A high pace game with a lot of possessions. Cannon can't hit in the corner. Childs with the stick back. Well, it's been the halls and and child show. Uh, so if you're BYU and Coach Rhodes, you've got to get more from other individuals on this basketball team, and they are capable. Just hadn't been able to knock down a lot of the shots today. BYU is 3 of 13 from beyond the arc. Holman off the curl. The up and under can't finish. And now the Cougars trying to put, string a couple baskets together. Still Cougars ball. Well, what I love about the body language of Lamar Peters, uh, we were sitting down and talking with the Weatherspoon brothers last night. He he wasn't concerned about that. Like, you know, some guys would be like, look, I'm the one that's put up eight, nine threes. I'm the one that's putting up 20-something points. He was still fine. These guys from Mississippi State really like each other. There's no ego thus far. And when you have a guy like Lamar Peters who, isn't putting up points in a game like today and is just fine at defending and distributing the basketball, that lets you know the staff has the mindset in the right place for the Bulldogs. Emery, no. Carter running, rising, scoring, and the lead is up to 18. Spread the word. Mississippi State's got a really good men's and women's basketball team here in Starkville. Both ranked. Inside the top 25. Mississippi State looking to push its win streak to nine in a row. A splendid feed from Hawes underneath. But no basket. Yeah, you got to finish that. As did Tyson Carter on this play here. Avoids the steal from Emory and does a nice job with the kiss off of the glass. He's another guy that really stays under control. You, you never really see him get sped up. 
You can tell he's a coach's son, plays with a high basketball IQ. And his body's continuing to improve, too, every year. Here's Peters again, flips to Holman. And two. At the line for one more. They're everywhere today. Continuing to elevate your game. Here, it's not a bad box out. This is just more strength and more athleticism by Adu on the interior. And that's something that I think Mississippi State can do to, to take their game to another level. With all the athletes that they have, I think if they could dominate even more, you see the second chance points, 22 to nine, I think that's something that they should have an advantage on every single game, like a Kentucky, uh, like a, a Tennessee does with the Admiral and, and, and Grant Williams, like Auburn does. Is a lot of the success due to the familiarity? The entire starting lineup from a year ago comes back, plus many others. Oh, you see that across the country. Uh, with teams that are bringing guys back, whether that be Nevada, who went to the tournament last year, or, or Auburn and Tennessee in this league. Peters feeding off the crowd. And Worthington fouls Adu. <laughs> Lamar Peters usually has a play where he makes defenders dance at least once a game. And right now, he's talking to Anthony Jordan and Orlando's pool saying, you can't just let the guys hold me. He, he feels like that he was getting fouled on that play, and Coach Howell is keeping him under control. He's an emotional player. A veteran ref, Anthony Jordan, one of the best, and, and having that conversation with Peters. This is a foul on Mississippi State. It's on Perry, so ball back to the Cougars. Just a word of wise for, for players on, on every level. Make sure that you keep the officials as, as your friends. <laughs> we want them to be your allies. Nick Weatherspoon back into the game after we saw him go down with a little discomfort. It's good to see him back for Mississippi State fans. and. Gets a chance for Lamar Peters to cool off a little bit too mm. on that sideline. BYU, you're down 21 on the road here in a hostile environment. You have to continue to chip away at this league. The question is how you do it. I think for BYU, number one, they got to make some shots, right? They, they've struggled. Uh, only three three-pointers on the night. Much better shooting team than that. Um, I think the length of Mississippi State has hurt them. But I also think you got to go inside. You have to challenge the shot blockers of the Bulldogs. See if you can get to the charity stripe and score while the clock is stopped. No one was inside the paint when that shot went up and a missed. Pause. Oh, and by the way, you got to get some stops on this end, too. Weatherspoon, great cut and another three-point play, perhaps in the cards. Every player moving. Really good. Moving without the basketball, and how about a do with the pass? If your hall's on that play, you have to see ball and man focused on Quindary Weatherspoon, but was not able to see the ball, and the help side defense was too little, too late. Defense has been a little bit of a problem for BYU this year. They allowed 113 points earlier this year to Weber State, but here's the good news. They've got an entire West Coast Conference schedule in front of them. And top to bottom, their league is stronger. There's still a lot of time for growth for BYU. I agree. I agree. And I like the fact that Gonzaga has set the stage and the example by showing that they're willing to play anybody, anywhere, anytime. I still think the Zags are a team that has as good of a chance as anybody. With Perkins at the point guard position. You look at uh, Clark and... Obviously, Rui does a nice job as far as the big, and you see their upcoming schedule. You know, the, the road is not going to be like at Mississippi State, but it's still going to be a challenge for them as they begin to get into conference play. 
Credit Dave Rose, too, for coming to Starkville. He's scheduled tough. It's exactly what he wanted and the way he wanted to challenge his team this season. Gavin Baxter with the bucket. You knew that was coming. There's a whistle. And we have been commending Lamar Peters the entire time, but you talk about the frustrations, and, and right now, him and Hardnett are going back and forth, and you see a double technical foul now. One on Lamar Peters. Both joining. That's right. And if you're watching, the officials are going to take plenty of time to allow cooler heads to prevail right now. As Orlando's pool, Rob Rourke, Anthony Jordan, they're going to sort it all out. Well, you mentioned it before, outstanding crew on hand. So you got two situations for Lamar Peters. Uh, we talked about the fact that he had put up a lot of points after coming into the game and really dominating scoring. Uh, and then you had conversations between he and the refs, and he still kept going. Here's the first whistle, yep. Technical on Peters. So Dave Rose is still, he seems to be unhappy with the way this is being administered. Rob Rourke, is over here talking with Damian Fishback. He'll have the details momentarily, but it seems like there is going to be, at a minimum, a technical on BYU, a technical on Mississippi State. What do you have, my friend? Well, he said that because even though there were two unsportlike uh, technicals, but they happened non-simultaneously, that they still have to shoot the free throws for both. So they do not cancel each other out, which they normally would, but instead they have to shoot two a piece because it's two separate acts. And Anthony Jordan just continues to reiterate uh, what we just said. Again, tremendous officiating crew, not only doing an outstanding job, but we appreciate when they communicate with us and keep us and the fans and viewers in the loop. No question. The ironic twist is Joshua Hardnett, who's shooting the technical free throws, he had the technical called on him. So now Mississippi State will shoot two. And look at the numbers for both guys. Players are happier <laughs> when they score. Yep. <laughs> right? And and you wanna you want your team to do well. And, and for example, with Hardnett, he he's actually, you know, in front of his family. He's back home in Mississippi, and so. You're down by 20 plus points, you're on the road, you're playing against a good point guard, and at the same time, for Lamar Peters, he was frustrated, felt like he wasn't getting the, the correct calls. The officials will only take so much. And so, they'll allow you to conversate, but after a while, you just have to close your mouth and play basketball, and that's what the officials are making sure that these two players learn today. A 23-point lead for the Bulldogs. Weatherspoon, the touch. Offensive board, Perry. Basket waved off. He is fouled, and that one is on the floor. But it will still be a one-and-one one for the McDonald's All-American. Well, he is a load to deal with, Kevin. And as the Bulldogs begin to look at SEC play, we talked about Tennessee, and you got Hall at Alabama. You got Tillman at Missouri. So many quality bees, bigs. Reed Travis, who you'll see later today, versus the Cardinals. Reggie Perry is going to be a load to deal with as they go through conference play. All right, so it's not just about the college football playoff today, but you also have this rivalry matchup. Number 16, Kentucky and Louisville inside the Yum Center at 2 Eastern time on ESPN2, and then also streaming on the ESPN app as well. Louisville hasn't lost at home. Chris Mack, the new head coach in Louisville this season. 
Always a great game. Yeah. Must rivalry for fans and people in Kentucky. Mississippi State up 25 at home. Bringing you everything. If you want to see it, it's going to be on ESPN. There's going to be a lot of hard hitting in the college football playoffs, but they're going to have pads, right? <laughs> UFC is real hitting. Real dudes, real grown men going at each other. I love it. Now, BYU is kind of taking one under the chin today. Mississippi State is led by double digits for the majority of this game, and the lead grows. Nick Weatherspoon went out with that leg injury earlier. He's returned, and his impact, and it's as large as it's always been. Yeah, Weatherspoon had a few words to say for Emory as well. I think it's more competition, but gets called for the foul of yep. veteran crew. And, and for, for Weatherspoon, it was more excitement fighting for his brother. Another technical. And this is on Nick Emery, the third technical, make it the fourth actually today. That has been whistled against either of these teams. Well, so if you're a fan and you're watching this right now, the question is, wow, so many technical fouls. Well, when you see altercations in athletics, typically it's little acts like this that actually go uncalled. So I commend this crew for making sure that they keep Everybody under control that they don't allow these players in a competitive game uh, to get out of hand. That's the fifth foul on the junior from Alpine, Utah. So he is now gone. We've, we've seen some minor confrontations, if you will, between these players. Some words being exchanged, at least at the second half, and as this one has started to get out of hand and continues. Mississippi State has been phenomenal from the free throw line. It's now 15 of 16. And Quindary Weatherspoon, who now has more than 1,600 points in his career at Mississippi State, wow. with 25 today. Well, and now Halls is actually going to shoot the free throws for Emory because that was his fifth foul. Right. So as he got the foul and had to exit the game, Halls is now getting an opportunity to score him a couple of easy ones. That was when Weatherspoon did bump Emory, so one and one. Emory still trying to find his way. Had an outstanding freshman season. All West Coast Conference second team and all West Coast Conference freshman team. I think he's going to have to be that critical piece that Dave Rose is looking for. He said we've had individual performances, but as a collective unit, just hadn't been able to put together a good 40 minutes of play. They'll do that as the season progresses. BYU has been on the road quite a bit in the non-conference, challenged itself with a 16, or pardon, 15 game non-conference slate. Go. Childs caught it and then he walked. You notice through this stretch, which has been the same in every game that I've watched by BYU, when Childs is not getting touches, when he's not impacting the basketball game, the Cougars struggle. Period. Whether it's the double team or whether he's just not uh, being proactive to try to get the basketball, he has to be active anytime he's in between the lines. Four points in the second half. You said it. Not much of an opportunity to score. Jump ball underneath. And the possession arrow favors BYU. Well, now there's frustration on the part of Eric Holman and Coach Ben Howland trying to keep his team under control. I don't think he likes the call either. So as a player, Eric Holman saying, I'm going to the basket, felt like he felt like he got fouled, and the officials have been calling it tight, and they get a jump ball. Right now, if you're a player, you just have to play basketball and forget about the officiating. Nice patience being displayed here by the Bulldogs. Love the fact that this team can play at different speeds, different styles. How about this step back? 
Little strong from Peters. And there's a loose ball foul on BYU. The foul's on BYU is 25. Baxter. That's Gavin Baxter. Well, Holman gets that back. Oh, with Lamar Peters, part of this situation was, you know, he was upset because he wasn't getting the basketball or wasn't getting the calls. The other situation is that BYU's done a fairly good job of staying in front of him. And so I guarantee you, as other teams watch him, the, the reputation now is going to be for Lamar Peters is he doesn't like it when you get into him. He gets frustrated when you don't allow him to do what he wants to do. That's something that Lamar Peters will have to deal with as they go throughout the season. Ben Howland's club about to get to 12 and 1. Timeout. Mississippi State all over BYU. Name for himself. You see that? Enough athleticism to get above the rim. Then the stop, pop, and watch the three point shot drop. And then look at his hands and ability to finish at the rim once again from Quindary Weatherspoon. It's much more than Weatherspoon brothers, much more than Lamar Peters. This Bulldog team is deep enough, talented enough. The question is, will they be consistent enough to get to the Final Four and possibly even win an SEC championship? We haven't won one of those since 2009. The last time it won the league in the regular season was 15 years ago. I'm with you. I think this team is under strong consideration to do that. What a pass. And on the run, Nick Weatherspoon now has Mississippi State at 90 points. Peters won't get the same kudos and congrats for the way that he has played this game as he did in the Clemson game. But he has had just as much as an impact in distributing the basketball as he did by putting up 27, 28 points. Look at this, watch him thread the needle through traffic and give credit for Mr. Nick Weatherspoon of running the floor. They play so well together, a tremendous backcourt and a deep backcourt for the Bulldogs. Rare to see a player impact the game like this who hasn't scored today. Well, and the question is, will their younger brother come to Mississippi State? That's what Mississippi State fans are wondering because they see how well that the Weatherspoon brothers play together. They care so much about each other, come from a tremendous family as well. Holman in the right, uh, right spot for the putback. The lead to 30. Child slips, floats it over Holman for two. Now he has better than 20 again. But his impact in the second half, it's been washed over considering Mississippi State, what it's done offensively. Now that's why I really like Childs. With big guys in particular, they either usually have or don't have touch. Both Childs and Holman for these two teams have touch. And that's what separates those guys as bigs. Quindary Weatherspoon with the bake. Boy, the Bulldogs now have 90 plus points for the fourth time this year. Baxter, and a little wild on the layup. Holman, can he get out of the jam? Right back to him. Boy, he's toying with these BYU defenders, and he's at the line. Eric Coleman, Orangeboro, Kentucky's finest. Good hands and showing BYU I'm just too big, too strong, and too talented. Five rankings, there's Tennessee, Auburn, Kentucky, but Mississippi State about to get to 12 and one. A big lead right now over BYU with Damian Fishback, Kevin Fitzgerald with you. And where do these Bulldogs stack up among the SEC's best? Well, it's been said that talent wins game, consistency wins championships. 
Well, this team has enough talent to win an SEC championship. The question is, will they continue to be consistent? We talked about what they have done in some of their previous games, getting down early to Arizona State, allowing teams to kind of get back into it. They were down on the road at Dayton. Now, those are all quality teams, but I think if this team can defend consistently, if they can rebound consistently, consistently continue to play together, then they will compete along with Auburn, Tennessee, and Kentucky to win this SEC championship. They certainly demand the respect where they have got, they have lived up to the hype. They entered the year in the preseason top 25 rankings. They're going to exit non-conference play with a 12-1 record. Well, they definitely should shoot up those rankings a lot higher. Now, I'm not looking at them right now, so the question is who you pull down. Uh, but, but if they continue to win, they'll continue to rise in those rankings. And most importantly, they want to be a team that is playing their best basketball come March Madness. And I really am impressed with this backcourt seeing them live today. It's Carter, the Weatherspoons, Peters, 100 points for Mississippi. For the first time since 2011. And a foul on Fiesel. How about this duo today? Eric Coleman and Quindary Weatherspoon going for a casual 55. And there's still three minutes and 15 seconds left in today's game. Well, and, and that's why they have the ability to succeed. These guys have 28 and 27 today, but you can get those same numbers from Lamar Peters, from Nick Weatherspoon, from Tyson Carter. That's why this is a team uh, that I think has the ability to advance because of their depth, because of their versatility on the offensive end, and because of a coach that's been to Final Fours in Coach Ben Howard. Another whistle. That's going to keep BYU at the line. The 100 points. The offense has been so efficient. And you, you remember what Ben Howland said a couple weeks ago. He goes, I really never coached a team that worked this hard at shooting in the offseason. I mean, they were in the gym as often as possible. Well, they, they shoot a little too many threes at times for me. Uh, but as I continue to watch them, it's because they have so many guys who have the ability to make those threes. My challenge is when it's not going well and when you're struggling offensively, use that big size. Use Abdullah Du or Eric Holman to get inside uh, and point, get point blank range baskets or get Quindary Weatherspoon to the rim. A little too much dribbling right there for Peters. Here's Harding, the freshman, and he's fouled on the way up. I saw Harding take that same type of play to the baseline and dunk it with two hands versus UNLV. And you see Coach Ben Howland. We talked about how he's improved at, at Mississippi State. You have to give the commissioner, Greg Sankey, and the ADs at large uh, certainly a compliment for the hires and the scheduling. And Coach Ben Howland exemplifies what we've seen throughout the entire Southeastern Conference. We saw that at Auburn with Coach Bruce Pearl. We've seen that at Alabama with Coach Avery Johnson. And you got new coaches this year. Of course, Rick Barnes, Coach of the Year at Tennessee. Yep. But I want you to continue to watch Coach Cream and Coach Kermit Davis. I think those two teams will continue to elevate themselves in conference play as well. Look out for those two. You watched, you've seen Georgia a couple times. Love their length, athleticism. Went to see them practice. But the team no one's talking about is Ole Miss and Coach Kermit Davis, who's done it for years at Middle Tennessee. He's going to surprise people in the Southeastern Conference as well. I promise you. Harding, the freshman. Can't spit it down. Offensive rebound, Selyus. And then he's hacked. Mississippi State with 100 points, a 32-point cushion. They led by double figures for much of the first half. BYU whittled it down to about 10 on a couple occasions in the second half. But then Ben Howland's team just put the foot on the gas. Yeah, and Zach Selyus, the 
man who just knocked down that free throw. He's one of the many players on BYU's team. He's got to give him more. His freshman year, he was first amongst freshmen in the record book from three-point percentage for BYU. And, and, and so this has not been the Cougars' best outing from multiple players on that on this team. Childs, Halls both played well. Uh, but they have to give Coach Rose more. Uh, but it's tough when you're playing on the road, and in particularly against a Mississippi State team who played outstanding basketball. E.J. Datcher, another big man that I think will be able to help extend the depth from Mississippi State. They have depth at the perimeter and depth on the interior, which means competition and getting better in practice every day. Harding knocked it loose, but he's out of balance. Ben Howland's team kicks off SEC play on the road at South Carolina on January 8th. But then you've got Kermit Davis's team staring you in the face a few days later at Kentucky on the 22nd as well. Yeah, all of those games, I think, signify how deep the Southeastern Conference is. As you see, another nice finish that time by Gray, and the crowd loves it. Uh, this, this league, the SEC, didn't have a great start, but they have had a tremendous finish. And I think, depending on what happens in the Big 12 SEC Challenge, they're a league that could finish in the top three or possibly even the top two this year. I think the league's that deep and that good. A couple years ago, the SEC sent just three teams to the dance, and South Carolina made a Final Four run. Then there were eight teams that made the tournament last year. We're set up to see something similar this season as well, you would think. Well, and I think they've set the stage for a lot of other conferences. In particular, you look at the WCC. They're even doing much better scheduling this year. And I think it pays dividends. I think as they continue to improve their scheduling, they begin to get more and more teams in the league. I think you see frustration from a team in St. Mary's who wins 27, 28, 29 games and doesn't get into the tournament. They're making adjustments, and I think they should be commended for doing that. Yep. One minute remaining. Celius for three, and he hits the triple. This is important. Maybe this type of finish will help him get back into his groove like he had his freshman year and play with some more confidence. T.J. Gray wanted one more basket. <laughs> there he goes, rising for two more. Salius again. Mississippi State up at times by more than 30 points. And the 19th ranked Bulldogs are going to extend that win streak to nine in a row before conference play next week. Well, Southeastern Conference has made a statement of late. There's still so many huge games today, but Mississippi State has made a statement not only in the conference, but I think across the country, more people need to take notice of what's going on in Starkville, Mississippi. Fizel fouls. Ryland Berger sit at the rim with 5.3. The offense, Mississippi State, Damian, they had to play at, at a pace that BYU typically plays at, high possession, and they answered the bell. They scored quite a bit today, 103 against BYU. Yeah, impressive. And for BYU, they have to continue to plug along. Look, they'll, they'll get better. They had struggles on the road, but have been very good at home, as they always are. But for Mississippi State, I think the country will find out very soon that this is a team that potentially could be in the Final Four. Look out. Now 12-1, nine in a row for Ben Howland's team. For Damian Fishback, our entire great crew, Kevin Fitzgerald saying so long from Starkville. St. Bonaventure and Syracuse coming up next.